Rihanna reveals pregnancy at Super Bowl halftime show. Rihanna delivered an electrifying and hit heavy halftime show at Sunday Super Bowl, but social media went into meltdown when the singer revealed an unexpected special guest. In an interview last week, Rihanna was asked if there would be any surprises during her performance at Arizona State Farm Stadium. I'm thinking about bringing someone, the Bayan singer replied. I'm not sure, we'll see. Naturally, fans assumed she was talking about the many artists she'd collaborated with during her illustrious career. A guest spot from Jay-Z, Drake, or Eminem seemed both likely and in keeping with the halftime show tradition of surprise duets. But Rihanna wasn't referring to any of them. Although nobody twigged it at the time, she was in fact hinting that she was pregnant with her second child. The singer may have failed to debut any new music during her performance at Sunday Super Bowl, but the baby bump she debuted instead broke the internet. Wearing an all-red jumpsuit by Lowe, Rihanna appeared on one of the several floating platforms which soared high above the crowd as a swarm of energetic dancers all dressed in white gathered below. The crowd went wild as the singer launched straight into a Better Have My Money, a somewhat iconic opener considering she was not being paid for her Super Bowl performance. As the 34-year-old dazzled the audience from on high, her dancers performed beneath her at breakneck speed and a display of razor-sharp choreography which they would maintain throughout the whole performance. The singer rattled through several of her most recognizable hits, front-loading her set with some of her most danceable and up-tempo numbers including Only Girl and the excellent Where Have You Been. It was a halftime show which was not short of a spectacle. Fireworks were let off above the stadium as she launched into the euphoric We Found Love. While rumors that the star might take the opportunity to perform new music failed to materialize, the decision to rely on her extensive back catalog, one of the strongest in pop music, was a sensible one. The singer packed a huge number of hits into a tight 14-minute set, often only performing the first verse or chorus of certain songs. But monster hits such as Rude Boy were balanced with somewhat harder-edged and lesser-known Pour It Up. Elsewhere, the set took advantage of some of her biggest collaboration, but without any of the collaborators actually joining her on stage, somewhat disappointingly. As she performed Run This Town, All The Lights and Wild Thoughts, there were no appearances from Jay-Z, Kanye West or DJ Khaled who normally feature on those tracks. But their absence didn't matter. By this point, everyone's attention was firmly on an entirely different and very visible special guest. And which songs did she perform? The first one was Better Have My Money with number 2 Where Have You Been and number 3 Only Girl in the World. It was followed by number 4 We Found Love, number 5 being Rude Boy and number 6 was Work. Number 7 was Wild Thoughts, and number 8 was Birthday Cake, the instrumental version, mashed with Pour It Up. Number 9 being All The Lights, number 10, Run This Town, 11 was Umbrella, and finally, number 12 was Diamonds. Confusion initially premiated social media as fans rushed to share their theories about Rihanna's apparent baby bump. Many pointed out the singer is known for her body positivity, and could very well have been showing off her curvier figure following her previous pregnancy. Although the star's bump was on display throughout, Rihanna did not draw attention to it quite as explicitly as Beyoncé did at the MTV VMAs in 2011, where she memorably dropped her microphone, unbuttoned her jacket, and rubbed her belly. But as Rihanna's set progressed on Sunday, viewers became increasingly confident she was pregnant again nine months after she and her partner ASAP Rocky welcomed their son. Within an hour of Rihanna's performance drawing to a close, as her fans debated exactly which trimester she might be in, her representatives confirmed the singer was indeed pregnant with her second child. While some fans admitted to a tinge of disappointment that this will likely mean yet another delay to Rihanna's much-anticipated ninth studio album, the reaction on social media was overwhelmingly joyful. Understandably, there were no costume changes during Rihanna's set and her band looked positively tiny compared with the number of dancers. Unlike last year's halftime show, which saw Eminem taking the knee on stage, Rihanna's set was distinctly light on political statements, something which may surprise those who remember why she previously turned down performing at the halftime show. The singer had confirmed to Vogue in 2019 that she had declined the invitation in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback who controversially knelt during the national anthem in protest against racism and police brutality. I just couldn't be a sellout. I couldn't be an enabler, she had said at the time. Four years later, taking the knee is much more commonplace, particularly in light of the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. And Rihanna's headlining of the Super Bowl is perhaps a sign of her approval of the NFL's progress in recent years. France broadly agreed her performance was worth the wait, featuring a set list which she had joked early in the week had been through 39 drafts before it was finalized. Rihanna had even found the time to subtly plug her cosmetics brand by fixing her makeup mid-performance, which quickly became another one of the night's viral moments.
Meanwhile, the annual jokes about the culture clash between pop music fans and sport fans were in full swing on social media, with Rihanna even embracing some of them herself. Ahead of the show, her clothing label manufactured t-shirts with the slogan, Rihanna concert interrupted by football game. Weird, but whatever. Model Cara Delevingne was among the attendees sporting one on Sunday. Fans of Rihanna admit the singer doesn't necessarily have the best voice in music. It's most distinctive than it is powerful. The kind of voice you'd recognize instantly on the radio, even if it was an unfamiliar song. Rihanna never needed to oversing anything. She always sounded too cool to emote, noted Stereogum's Tom Brian, ahead of her Super Bowl debut. But what set Rihanna apart from her other peers is the sheer number of hits she has to her name. In the late 90s and early 2000s, she churned out chart toppers faster than the industry's top songwriters could compose them. She even released seven albums in as many years, scoring a new worldwide hit every few weeks. As a result, the only disappointment with her set was the number of songs she simply didn't have room to squeeze in. Her earlier hits, such as Ponder Replay and SOS, would have gone down as a treat, as with the pounding Don't Stop the Music and monster hit What's My Name, although we did get a tiny snippet of the latter at the beginning before she appeared on stage. Others, such as the rather graphic SNM, were probably wise to avoid, given the Super Bowl's history with offending family audiences during the halftime show. And surely, everybody can be grateful that her set wasn't dragged down by her most recent release, Lift Me Up, from the soundtrack to Marvel's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, a perfectly nice song which deserves its Oscar nomination and which would not have worked at the Super Bowl. Instead, Rihanna raced towards the end of her set with some of her most undeniable anthems, climaxing with her Ode to British Weather umbrella and the rousing diamonds. It may not have grabbed the headlines for the reasons fans were expecting, but Rihanna gave us a halftime show we will never forget.